this is definitely developed from m- my childhood, like be having to be in survival mode my whole my whole childhood. Hi everyone, El Ballard is here today on our next podcast episode with my good friend all the way from Bangkok, Lynn Howard. Hi Lynn. Hi El, good morning, good evening to you. Good morning, good afternoon. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much for you know being on our podcast um, as an early riser, appreciate it. And I'm so excited to be talking with you today. Um, so Lynn is a business development strategist. She's an international speaker and she's an author of three books. One of her books is called And So She Did. Love that name. And the two other books and that she co-authored, um, they call The Pursuit of Badassery. And we will put the links to get those books in the um, recording of this video or if, of listening to the audio as well. I like to ask this question um, usually because, you know, we choose different fields of work for business and uh, and in life. Sometimes we pivot, sometimes we change things. But why do you do uh, what you do? Why you chose this field for your work? <laughs> I don't feel I chose it. I feel like it chose me (laughs) in a lot of ways. Yeah. You know, um, I I, I feel like I've been having this conversation a lot lately is that, uh, you know, sometimes we have things that come very innate to us, like intuitive, uh, easy, and um, just like entrepreneurship has always been something uh, it. I'm not saying I haven't had difficulties, but it's just something that has been very, very intuitive for me um, and, and development and strategy. And um, so, yeah, I've, I've actually been an entrepreneur. I know this might shock some people, but I've been an entrepreneur literally 30 years, um, 30 years. So since I graduated high school. I have been hustling. Um, and sometimes, you know, I've, I've held C-suite positions. I've held other like roles and, and jobs, but um, I feel like, yeah, it's kind of chosen me. And I also will say that it's definitely, it's definitely in alignment with the bigger purpose of which I have, even though my bigger purpose is more on a humanity scale and to leave each place person better than what I found it. It's the short shortened version, but I do this through also my work um, to be able to help empower those to be the change, create the change, live in the change and inspire additional change. Right. And so um, I help them find the fundamentals or build the fundamentals and the foundation, find um, their, their drive. If they've lost it, like really hone that in and be able to, um, create a life by design and by choice. And, and that is very much my story. So I feel like, again, this position really hasn't, I didn't choose it, but I did, but it really, it chose me, you know, it just, it's very much a part of who I am in in my life. Yeah. I love that. I love that. Thank you. And I know our listeners will get to know more from the book, um, kind of deep dive into your story. And I know you've uh, changed. And thank you so much for what you do, because you're changing so many lives, uh, supporting women in businesses. Um, I know you supported me, you know, so indirectly. Um, But uh, yeah, so thank you. Thank you. Um, And I know that's how our partnership started as well. Um, and so building for 30 years, that's amazing. So all this experience, and I know there are so many lessons probably, but what would be um, one or two, some of the biggest lessons um, that you had to overcome or you had to learn um, while building a business? Oh, that's a really good question. So I'm going to go with one that I just kind of spoke about first, and then uh, I'll add more of a practical one. But one of the things I believe in business and in life is that we always have a choice. Um, we always have a choice in the matter. And uh, sometimes we don't have a choice in what has happened or been thrust upon us, but we have a choice of how we navigate, how our mindset is around that, how, um, you know, the, the, the next step a lot of times, how we process it. And um, this is something that actually I learned from a very, from, a lot of personal experience about like not living by our circumstances to like, just really say, okay, 
what's in front of me? How do I move forward? How do I it always, and my tagline actually used to be no excuses, only solutions because, and again, I, this is definitely developed from m- my childhood, like be having to be in survival mode my whole, my whole childhood. And so understanding like, okay, these are the cards that I was dealt with instead of me sitting and wallowing, instead of me trying to like be frustrated and not saying that I haven't had both of those moments. What can I do? How, what choice do I have in this moment? Um, and sometimes it's inaction. Inaction is a choice. Um, and so just really understanding that we always have a choice in it and there's always a cause and effect. So um, that example that I just gave, like the inaction, like there's always, even though we might not, we might avoid that particular conversation. We might not decide to take this particular position or this particular contract. Inaction is also an action, right? So if we sit there and do nothing with our head in the sand, things will still happen around us. But I've always chosen more or less to be in the driver's seat of life, but also in my business. Now, the second caveat to that, that is maybe a more practical kind of hands-on is that, you know, being in the driver's seat of your business, of your life means having your calendar control, right? So if you are not in control of your calendar and your clients are, everybody else is, then that means that you're in the passenger seat. You're not driving your business, Um, being in the driver's seat means that you're making the choices and not allowing others to make the choices with you looking at everything and saying, okay, where, where can I move from here? Instead of allowing somebody to make that choice for you. Now, I know there are circumstances where you might have to concede or make an exception for your calendar or for a choice and somebody else needs to make that, that decision or that choice for you. But again, those should be exceptions and not the primary. I would also say, you know, another big lesson too is like we're so multidimensional. And a lot of times with businesses and entrepreneurship, um, we try to, and I do bento box, I do like separate things out, but one affects the other. So what's happening in your financial is going to affect your spiritual, affect your business, affect your personal. And when we tend to do business, especially entrepreneurs, we tend to um, just look at, we try to keep everything at bay and like, you know, this whole work-life balance BS, which I don't like that word because it's almost like we're trying to like make it equal over here, make it equal over there, make it because balance is more like equality, like the kind of the scale. Um, And this, this whole thing about um, trying to, trying to stay in balance, trying to um, really like not stay in the driver's seat of your business. Like it's, it's going to hurt you not realizing that everything's interconnected. It can hurt you. So when you are doing your, your goals for the year, when you are looking at cause and effect, when you are looking at balance, or like I like to say harmony, you need to look at the full picture, not just one aspect. Now that doesn't mean that you can't hyper-focus in on one aspect of your life, your business, this and that, but um, to really look at it through such a holistic lens, because that gives you the ability to be able to strengthen everything. And you have feast or famine, not just in your business, but also in your personal life and your spiritual life and your emotional life, like in your physical life, people get so busy, they don't have time to work out. And then what happens to your, your, your body, your body starts to change, your mind starts to change, right? It's the same thing with across everything. That's just like a physical representation of it. So I know that that, that's lots of little like lessons and nuggets that I definitely feel like I live in, in my business and in my life, but I think I can continue to go on. I can't just give a couple, but (laughs) yeah. yeah. I love the holistic um, view on on things. I totally agree. I think, uh, especially, I believe, um, as women, we feed off of different areas of our lives. We cannot be um, just being in one. We just have that ability to be present um, everywhere and everything. But then we also feed off of everything. I want to talk about the books. I know you have two books. Um, if you could tell us, uh, so The Pursuit of... Uh, I know you, yeah, 
Beautiful, beautiful. So one is blue, another one is uh, what are what are they? What's what what are they about? And yeah, so I'll give you a little bit of background before I jump into that. Is that about uh, my business partner? I have several businesses, but um, my my business partner uh, was a client, a longtime client, and we always knew we were going to work together. And uh, after COVID, uh, because it's been since I've been in Bangkok and I got here three days before the world shut down <laughs> uh, to live, um, The during COVID, we were still consulting and she was selling a brick and mortar. And uh, long story short, because I, I knew she needed to be in consulting, um, she decided to come into consulting. So we we're having like weekly calls without a, a legit business yet and like helping each other and um, I was still consulting her and getting her business up and running. We decided to, we're like, screw it. Like we're, we're, we're great. We hold each other accountable. We're great partners. Um, we have a lot of similarities, but we also have a lot of differences and she, we're like, let's create a business. And one of the things right away was we need to write a book because both of us want, wanted to write a book. Mm -hmm. We've been asked to write a book. Like, uh, so, um, yeah, so hence the blue book was created, which is more kind of leadership, self-development, entrepreneurship too, but we have a lot of people who actually read it who aren't even entrepreneurs. They're maybe working um, in the corporate world or whatnot. There's lots of nuggets in there for everybody. And then the green one, it came um, nine months later, we launched that book and it's a sales edition. So it's mostly based on sales, but but yeah, it's just all the little nuggets of, um, of, you know, they're like little short stories essentially. And we, we split the two books and, um, yeah, it's just little short stories based on a, on a topic like, you know, delegation or like loving people from afar or mindset. Like there's a lot of money and mindset and different things, how to overcome, um, and pivot, um, in the books and the sales is the same. We use our personal stories to kind of just um, teach or go through a lesson. And the thing is, is Amanda and I are very action oriented. Like um, we believe in learning. Absolutely. But we, the, the race is not one in the book. The race is one in, in the field. Like you have to get into the water to understand what the water feels like. And we're very much that person, like people hire us because we make them do things <laughs> and hold, <laughs> hold, hold them accountable. And that's what these books were. We literally actually, um, between the two of us, we wrote and self published four books within a year and a half. Um, the two badassery books together. And then my book, um, which is a nonlinear autobiography. And then, um, she, she, uh, wrote a children's book. So, um, yeah, these books, are just kind of like all the little nuggets of wisdom that we've always been asked about in our lives. And we have a lot more books in us. Um, we're, we'll probably have one more launch um, at the end of this year. We actually had another, a third book lined up right away, but so many people were overwhelmed that we published um, and launched another book in less than a year, um, that, uh, we got a lot of like pushback. And so it kind of like made us like say, okay, we know we can do this. Like literally I wrote my section of the second book in five days. I went away, I went down South and went by the sea and in five days I wrote my half of the book. Okay. So, I mean, we're just doers, we're action oriented. So I love them and they're just great little, like, um, yeah, there's worksheets and downloadables and it's very like, now apply it. Like you learned this, now apply it. Yeah, I love that. I love that. I cannot wait to read it. <laughs> I love that. And so our readers would um, definitely enjoy it. I know, I know that. Um, beautiful. So yeah, thank you for putting all of your experience into these books and, and sharing it with the world. I know there are so many nuggets in them. Um, I have to ask why Bangkok? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Bangkok. So um, I fell in love with Thailand over 20 years ago. Um, I was living in Saudi Arabia with my then husband and kids, and we came here on vacation. And it, it felt like I, especially Chiang Mai up north, I felt like I'd come home. Mm -hmm. And um, there were certain aspects. So 
when um, I started traveling again a lot a few years pre-COVID um, because of work and uh, pleasure as well, but mostly work because my kids were in high school. So I'd always tack on some fun days, but usually people were, I was traveling because people were paying me to come see them. But uh, I made Thailand a stopover and then it, we ended up having, I was part of a huge network organization, um, business organization, and they had their global conference here. And then I ended up getting aligned with a non-for-profit out of the North, very much pulled on my heartstrings. So I, I, I quickly fell in love with this non for profit. And so I was working with them as well. So that that just made me come back and forth even more. So I was coming here three or four times a year. Oh. Um, and yeah, and so um, I'd built a community here. Um, I'd help I'd actually helped a couple of friends get jobs here, like in my travels and making connections because I'm a connector. And um, yeah, so I was coming to visit some of those friends and then go up north to the not for profit and see the girls. I came here, but I I, I knew actually my ex husband and I are, are were best friends and um he 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 works in the contracting uh, side of the world, we'll say. And, um, he knew some things he was actually heading back to Afghanistan and he called me up. I was in Bali actually before, uh, before Thailand. And he called me up and he's like, babe, I'm never going to tell you what to do, but I'm letting you know, like the world is literally about to lose their mind and shut down. He's like, I don't want you to have, you know, be anywhere where there's martial law. And, um, so, I kind of knew things were heading that way, but I, I felt, I felt safe here. Um, and, and really in all, like mm -hmm. in retrospect, it was one of the best places to be. Like they shut down Thailand. We didn't have COVID for a while. Um, like really rampant until like six to nine months, I think after like everything, maybe even close to a year, like, um, it was crazy to experience Thailand without all the tourists because Thailand is such a tourist destination. So when the provinces were open, I was able to travel like internally a lot um, and be able to see some of the most amazing things that would be a bit more difficult to see with billions of people in this country. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I yeah. And I, I just, I, I, I love it. I, um, you know, I travel a lot, but, um, it is a good home base and yeah. Well, thank you for sharing that story. I was always curious and I know we talked briefly about yeah. it. <laughs> um, yeah. and, and it's given, that, I think it's given me also, oh, sorry, it's given me some space too, because, you know, it's not like, I mean, I definitely am rooted in the community, um, and there's huge ex expat community, but it's also like, um, because, English isn't the first language. Like there are some, although I, I've learned a little bit of Thai, but, um, and, and a lot of people do speak English, but I think it also like, it gives a very different aspect too. So it's given me the ability to kind of like, not feel like I have to be out doing things, which makes, it makes it harder for work. Cause then I have to like work harder because uh, my, my relationships, my business is more international. Right. And so if I'm not traveling there, how am I connecting with them? But it gives me like the space to be inward more and it's the culture, like the Buddhist kind of nature to like be inward. So I think it's been, I think it's been great um, for that aspect as well. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. And uh, pandemic, global pandemic, I feel like made us also, um, all of us go inward more. <laughs> we were shut down and uh, cannot go out. And yeah, being, it's interesting. It's a whole different conversation, right? That all this experience during pandemic. Yeah, it, yeah. it is. It is. But okay. I could imagine like writing, it's interesting because finishing my personal book, which is released in January, the end. So she did like, I I feel like, writing it here was part of the really the evolution of this book uh, there there was something about writing this book here and even writing my next book I have a feeling I'll write my personal book um I'll start it by the end of the year but um I like to go away and be away and like kind of hold up especially for the personal book I had to be because it was super emotional but even for the other two books like like I said, with the green book, I went away and I think bank like Thailand in itself, like held the capacity for me to be able to do that. I know that might, 
That might sound a little woo woo, but it, it feels very much like like it, they were destined to come out here. Especially my my last book, my personal book. I totally get it. Yeah, yeah. It makes me think as I'm starting to work on mine. To um, yeah, I I do need to get away for some even sometimes on the projects I'm working on, or if I'm you yes. know some uh, creativity, creative thoughts, or just getting away from the daily. And I like to say, um, when I travel, it's funny, when I'm in the plane, all this new insights start coming in. It's something, yeah. Like I love travel as well, but it's, it's, I really experience when I change my daily uh, scenery, my daily place I live in. Um, so I totally, totally get it. I like to go to Mount Diablo right here, actually close to my place. Um, not to the very top, but to the mid of it. And it's just for the reason, because it's just so quiet. Only mm. birds. like I could just hear birds, that's it. And so sometimes that, even that helps me just to realign my thoughts or just get away to things. Absolutely. There, there's a, I mean, we should be connecting to nature. And it's funny over the years, I've had these conversations about like, and our spot, our special spots can change, uh, even if we live in the same location. Like when I lived in Hawaii, I, I had a couple of very, what I would call, I mean, they, some of them were actually sacred spots in the Hawaiian culture, but they were sacred to me uh, for different reasons. And even here, like I, I need to travel, I have to go away. And I just got back from the Philippines and like the ocean is so much um, I mean, we have the sea here, but the, the water is so much like an aspect that I need in my life, but so are the mountains. So I go up north a lot into Chiang Mai. And so um, it's, it's important because we should be practicing like that grounding, that emptiness, that stillness um, to, especially for, you know, especially for people like us who are just like, powerhouses like go 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 super type a and you know people look at me and they think that I have no like harmony in my life but no I take this I make the space I'm conscious I take the time to go to the park to put my feet in the you know on on mother earth and to like really um really come back to myself and those sacred spaces are really important for us and so I'd encourage all of your listeners to find your sacred space and like understand it with intention that that's your space like you said like midway up the mountain and be able to just kind of be just right be. just be wow. I love that I love that reminder yeah just having your own sacred space yeah I love yes. that so we just spoke about travel and everything and of course I have to ask what does it mean for you to be a woman of the world I, got, I just got chicken skin <laughs> my <laughs> red egg chicken skin that's such a complex answer so I'm just kind of gonna roll with it I think that being a woman of the world, what it means to me is great responsibility, but not in a daunting way, in a way that's empowering, in a way that is purposeful, in a way that is meaningful. But I also know it's like part of my purpose, like very much part of my spiritual purpose, my human purpose, my all of all of my purpose, right? And so um, I feel like being a woman of the world is about showing up and uh, leading with uh, service. I'm a, service is my love language, but I feel like that is part of being a woman of the world. But also, and this is something, and I, I definitely write about it, putting in the work to heal, to break those karmic ties, to be the example, to lead through humility. I feel like... Um, and again, this is my journey, my, what I feel like my, my connection to being a woman of the world is, is like to be able to leave the ripple effect and understand that I will never know the cause and effect that it will have, but that that's not for me to see. It is for me to plant all those seeds, to create all those ripples, to be able to empower others, to be able to hold space for others um, in such a different way. But one of the things I am on a nonprofit board, nine to 15 conferences a year. And now that um, the country's back open, all of them are based in Bangkok, but my co people, they're out of Serbia, but they've been doing it. We, the organization's been around 20 years. 
and we bring these people from all across the world. Um, most of our conferences, 80% or more are from out of country. They're boutique conferences, but even when language is a different, uh, you know, the languages are different, the cultures are different, the religions are different, we can still have such a, such a profound, such a profound purpose in, in that room, as long as we're leading through authenticity of who we are and our values. And I see this time and time again, facilitating these conferences, not just through what I'm doing, but more importantly, like watching other women from all across the globe do this. And, and I know I'm part of this because I'm helping facilitate this and create that space. I'm not, I'm not dissing like my part of it, but to, to be able to like hold the container and hold space for other women to do it as well. That is being a woman of the world, not just living it. I'm not just at the table. I'm also creating space at the table and I'm creating new tables for women to be at. And I feel like, you know, that's what it means for me to be a woman of the world, leaving legacy things for, for generations after to be able to still feel the effects or have that knowledge or, or whatever, because it's not, we are creators naturally as women. And so what I create, I want to, I want to withstand, I want it to withstand. And so um, but again, this is my purpose and I, I, I know it can feel daunting or overwhelming to some, but this is who I am. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. And I think that we, we can, I can so, so, so relate. Uh, and I think that's why we connect. Um, Absolutely. Well, because, you know, on some much, such a deeper level, because I totally, totally resonate with that. And thank you so much. I also had goosebumps and thank you Maya, for, so much for sharing that. Um, yeah. Uh, because this is so much bigger than us and um yeah and i love the diversity um as well just having different voices in the room and everything so thank you so i'm gonna finish with the rapid fire questions okay so your favorite book name is well now it's <laughs> mine and so yeah. she did yes it I actually is i i will i'm sure we'll talk a little bit about that but i would say um if it's not my book I, I do love Atomic Habits by mm. James Clare. Awesome. Uh, beach or mountains? Beach. Favorite destination to visit? Right now, I'm, I'm going to say the ocean again. I mean, just uh, anywhere with the ocean. Summer or winter? Winter right now. I grew up in very heavy winter. So yeah, well, I'm originally from Chicago, so I've oh. experienced some winter, yeah, yeah. definitely. But I, for the last, I don't know, almost 20 years, I've lived in like hot yeah. places because Hawaii and Saudi before that. So I, I would definitely say I'm more of a summer person, but I, I've been craving the winter because I don't have it. And the final question is things that you have discovered about yourself recently. Well, I would say that it's kind of continuing to rediscover is that I am still very much in a lot of healing process, even though I've done a lot of work. Definitely, it's something I've uncovered some new things, especially since opening up the Pandora's box with the last book. But um, I would say that um, new learnings would be also... Uh, about myself is that I'm not even close to being done. Like, and, and I mean that in a business sense, but also in a personal sense. And I think that that's been a really, not that I thought that I was, but this new like level and that I, I miss the beach. Like I miss the ocean. Um, I think that that probably was uh, a big one for me just because of being lost at sea in the Philippines for a few days was wonderful so I love that well thank you for playing <laughs> yes. and I love deep conversations I love 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 just going into depth and just disco discovering and talking so I really really truly enjoyed it thank you thank you so much we will post all links um on how to connect with Lynn how to get her books um and everything and please please connect with her she's so amazing thank you so much Lynn again for being um on this podcast I truly enjoyed it absolutely I'll thank you and keep doing all the amazing work that you're doing for the women of the world